The brain is the most complex organ in the human body. It controls almost everything. But sometimes imbalances can disrupt normal function, causing any number of abnormalities and ailments, including mood disorders, such as depression. ECT is given to treat depression, and it is sometimes used to treat other mental illnesses, like catatonia and bipolar disorder, when other treatments have not worked. Electroconvulsive therapy involves delivering electricity to the brain to cause a generalized seizure. And then we do a series of seizures over two to three times a week over two to four weeks to treat the psychiatric condition that brought the patient into treatment. The idea that seizures would help depression came from observing people with epilepsy. It was observed that after an epileptic patient woke up from a seizure, the individual was much calmer and their behavior was better controlled. Essentially, it's the brain's response to its anti-convulsant or its anti-seizure effect may actually be the therapeutic element. But what exactly is depression? Depression is not simply being sad or having a bad day. Depression is a medical condition that is a combination of symptoms. I would describe depression as having kind of a great big gray kind of over you, you feel very dull and heavy. I was extremely tired a lot. I got increasingly bad tempered. It came on very quick and it was quite severe. I clearly was not myself. My main problem was depression presenting as anxiety and nervous tension. I didn't want to talk to people. I didn't want to hang out anymore. Um, I really became uh, withdrawn. Depression is the primary mental illness that is treated with ECT. ECT is often recommended when antidepressant medications are not effective or if they cause unacceptable side effects. So it's often used in patients that have tried some of these other treatments and they haven't responded well. And so we might go to electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, to see if that will work for them. ECT is also called for when a patient is dangerously suicidal and can't wait the two or three weeks to see if the medication will be effective. Before I knew what was going on, I was threatening to kill myself. And that always gets doctor's attention. And my wife said to me at one stage, I think you, we ought to go to the emergency room. Over the years, ECT has been improved and refined. The popular novel and movie, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, depicted ECT as painful and inhumane. The difference is they used it in the movie as a punishment. Very different than the therapeutic version of ECT that we would do today. A therapy that is the best hope for many depressed people. I really wanted something that would work quickly and, and effectively to get me back, back into my life again. I was really not surprised when um, they, they brought up the suggestion. Most patients that come in for ECT need anywhere from 6 to 12 treatments to get the full benefit. The number of treatments an individual patient might need is kind of dynamically determined based on how they're responding to the treatment. And some patients are better within three or four treatments and side effects. And so we try to make sure we get the greatest efficacy with the fewest side effects. Candidates for ECT treatments are carefully screened to be sure their heart is stable and that they are otherwise healthy enough to go through the procedure safely. ECT can be done on an outpatient basis, but not everyone can go home the same day. A patient will often stay in the hospital overnight, especially if this is their first treatment. I felt that I was well cared for. Um, everything was explained to me well. When an outpatient arrives for their ECT treatment, they will arrive at the same day center where they will check in. Almost always we do it early in the morning. And so patients will show up to the hospital around 7, 7.30 in the morning. I go into the preparation room and change into my hospital gown. A nurse takes vital signs and an IV is placed on the patient's arm. The anesthesiologist will use this to administer medications during the procedure. I wait for a little while in the preparation room and then a nurse comes and wheels me into the post-anesthesia care unit which is right outside the treatment room. I wait very briefly and then am taken into the treatment room. We use a medication to gently relax the muscles in the body so that you don't get that physical movement. The relaxant lasts only a few minutes 
And during this time, the patient will need help with breathing. And then we give oxygen, so we make sure that the patient has, you know, all the oxygen they need through the procedure. We're just going to give you some medicine to make you real sleepy. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is just keep taking those nice, big, big breaths all the way in and then all the way back out again. Once the team is sure that the patient is completely unconscious and will feel nothing, the procedure begins. And the treatment involves two electrodes, essentially, that we put uh, at different places on the scalp. Electricity passes from one to the other. That then causes the seizure. The seizure lasts anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds in most cases. The doctor reads the EEG tape to ensure the seizure was long enough and strong enough. The amount of electricity um, actually used to cause the seizure is very low. You could be touching the patient anywhere on the body and you would not feel a thing. When the doctor is satisfied and the treatment has caused an adequate seizure and the seizure is over, the patient is wheeled into the recovery area. About a minute or so later, the patient's breathing on their own. 10 to 15 minutes later, they're awake, typically oriented, and then in another 30 to 60 minutes, they are able to leave the hospital. Often, people are groggy and confused from the treatment and the anesthesia. So those who are going home the same day need to arrange for someone to drive them. These effects will wear off quickly. After my treatment, I feel as though, you know, the heaviness has been lifted. A patient usually needs to have four or five treatments before they start feeling better. Family and friends might very likely see improvements before the patient notices a change. I didn't notice an improvement in my mood for, I think, the, at least till the second or third treatment. And then I, I noticed a small improvement and then, then a much larger improvement after that. But for Dr. Richard Nordgren, he noticed a difference after his first treatment. It really did make a big difference. It sort of snapped me out of my symptoms. ECT does not necessarily cure mental illness once and for all. A new episode of depression may come along and require separate treatment with therapy, antidepressants, or ECT. Knowing that this works very quickly for me and, and completely, that um, it's just a great treatment option. ECT has one important side effect that patients and families should consider carefully. Some patients will have short-term memory loss around the time of ECT, so have a hard time remembering things that happen, say, between treatments. Some patients will have memory loss for things that happened to them in the past, and so something, some event they went to that they used to remember very well, they may not remember it as well as they used to. These memories may or may not return. Some additional common side effects could include headaches, nausea, and muscle aches, though these can be typically managed with medication given during the procedure. What really matters is I feel reconnected to life. I feel like getting up and doing things and seeing people and just generally being active and social. Electroconvulsive therapy is an aggressive treatment, recommended when other treatments haven't worked or when a patient needs immediate help. ECT has brought relief to hundreds of thousands of people, and it saves lives, preventing suicide and self-neglect. Improvements in anesthesia, muscle relaxants, and state-of-the-art equipment have made it a safe procedure and have reduced the degree of memory loss. Patients recover quickly, and ECT does not cause brain damage or change personality. For someone who would be looking into ECT but still wasn't quite sold on the idea, I'd, I'd have them definitely talk to their doctor and... Ask a lot of questions and listen to the answers and talk to people who've had it. With ECT, you often see 100% improvement and that's ex extremely gratifying to sort of be able to get somebody from very dysfunctional, not able to work, hardly able to get out of bed, to back to, I want to go back to school, I want to go back to work, I feel fine.